In the previous webinars, my colleague Faisal has covered engine, alternator, and deep sea. And today I will be covering generator installation. As usual, if you have any question related to our webinar, please click on the question mark icon on the chat box and type your question. We will be addressing all the questions by the end of the webinar. So today we will be discussing the generator installation and how to locate the generator in a room what are the main factors affecting the generator installation? How to make the foundation for the generator? How to make the proper ventilation for the generator room? We will talk also about the exhaust system and how to calculate the back pressure for the exhaust system. And how to make the inlet and outlet opening for the generator room. So, there are many factors affecting the generator installation. Today, we will be discussing five of these factors, which are access and maintenance location for the generator, generator foundation, vibration transmitted to building and equipment, ventilation of the generator room, and engine exhaust piping and insulation. So, the generator set may be located in a basement or another floor of the building, on a balcony, in a pit house on the roof, or even in a separate building. So, when we installing the generator in a room, care must be taken to uh, keep easy access to provide, a gener for, to provide uh, a proper access for maintenance and general repairs. So if we put the generator inside the room, if you can see in this picture, we have to keep enough space around the generator to keep easy access for maintenance and repair. So we must have, or we should have easy access to make uh, generator general services like changing oil and filters, filling oil, filling coolant, and uh, removing and installing the main components of engine and alternator, like uh, cylinder heads, uh, starter motor, DC alternator, uh, uh, for example, uh, the main alternator. So we must keep enough space here around the generator. In the upcoming slide, I will show you how much the minimum distance you have to keep around the generator. So this is uh, engine or generator room layout. In this layout, you can see the main components of the generator room. Here we can see the louvered panel for the air inlet. Here we can see the air outlet louver. Here we can see the exhaust system and the silencer. We can see the fuel tank, the batteries. We can see here the radiator with the ducting system. And we will talk about all of these components in the upcoming slides. So now uh, we will talk about the generator foundation, the base frame under the generator and the concrete foundation that we are keeping the generator on it. So uh, when we mount an engine and alternator, we must take the consideration, or the consideration must be given to the type of the engine mounting's foundation, which must be enough support to the total weight of the engine alternator and the, uh, the driven unit. So, we must have enough to support the weight of the unit to, uh, like, uh, 
enough support of where the unit and stresses produced by the driven units during the operation. So what is the importance of the generator foundation? The importance of the generator foundation is to give the support, the static weight of the unit, withstand any stresses or vibration when the engine is running, and be sufficiently rigid and stable so that there will be no distortion which would affect the alignment of the engine and the driven unit. The third important is to absorb vibration coming from the running units and to prevent to transmit this vibration to the floor and walls. So before installing the generator inside the room and before making the foundation, the most, the most important point is to check the subsoil at the site the subsoil at the site and at the generator room, we have to check this subsoil. The site subsoil must have a bearing strength capable of supporting the weight of the complete unit plus concrete foundation at which it will be stand. So we have to check the subsoil under the generator. If we have a doubt about this soil, so uh, advice should be taken from a qualified engineer to enable the type and size of concrete foundation to be determined. So if we have any doubt for the subsoil at the site, advice must be taken from the civil engineer, qualified civil engineer to enable the type and size of the concrete foundation. Now we'll talk about the fixed concrete foundation under the generator. What is the size of this foundation, length, length width, and the depth of the foundation, and, and how to calculate the depth of this foundation? So the recommended size for the fixed concrete foundation is to allow between 300 to 450 mm surrounded on all sides of the set. And each generator must have its own concrete foundation. So if you have two or three generators or many generators inside the room, we have to keep separate foundation for all the generator sets. I'll show you this one, this slide here. So this is the generator set. So we have to keep here on all sides of the generator set 300 to 450 mm. So from this side, 300 to 450, from this side, 300 to 450, from the right, from the right side, the same, and from the left side, also the same, 300 to 450. This is the length and width. Now, what about the depth? The depth, this is a formula we are using to calculate the depth of the concrete foundation. This formula is D equal I think there is a, a mistake. It's divided. Okay. Okay. The depth of the concrete foundation is W divided by D times B times L. What is the D? D is the depth of the concrete foundation in meter. W is the total weight of the generator set, including engine, alternator, base frame, okay? And D is the density of the concrete in kilogram per cubic meter. B is the width of the concrete plot. And L is the length, all in meter. So the length and width must be in meter. If you don't have any accurate figure for the concrete, concrete uh, density, then we can use this 2,403.8 kilogram per cubic meter. 
Now I will show you an example how to calculate the foundation sizes. For example, consider that we have 500 kV generator and we want to design uh, a foundation for this 500 kVA. So the generator, I will give now this generator dimensions, the length is 365 uh, centimeter and the width is 112 centimeters. And the generator weight is 3,797 kilogram. This is standard, this is our generator, Shubedi generator. So the length is uh, 365, the width is uh, 112, and the weight is 3,797 kilogram. So the first step, we will add 30 centimeter on all sides of the generator. So we can determine the length and the width of the foundation. So 30 side from the right, 30, side, 30 centimeter from the left, and 30 centimeter from the front and 30 centimeter on the back. So the foundation length by adding the 30 centimeter will be 425. So this 365 plus 30 plus 30 because 30 on the front and 30 on the back. So the length will be 425 centimeter and the width will be 172 by adding 30 on the right and 30 on the left. So here we determine the length and width of the foundation. Now, what about the depth? Using this formula, again, we can calculate the depth of the foundation. So the foundation depth equal 3,797, 3, this is the weight of the generator, divided by 2,403.8, this, this is the density of the concrete, times 4.25, the foundation uh, length, times 1.72, the generator width, which will be equal 0 0.216 meter, equal 21.6. So the depth of the concrete foundation in our in this for 500 kV generator will be 21.6 centimeter. So this is very simple formula to calculate the depth. And again, here I mentioned for you that we have to check also before installing the foundation, we have to check the subsoil at the site and to check if the subsoil can uh, can take the weight of the generator set plus the foundation. So if, the, if you have any doubt, again, in the subsoil, take the advice from a civil engineer uh, regarding this. So this is general information. So this is the generator set. As I told you, we have to keep 30 to 45 centimeter on all, the, on all sides of the generator. And uh, this is the depth of the foundation. We calculated before in the same formula. Uh, see, for the generator room, we must, this is the foundation, huh? not the generator set. So we have to keep at least clearance one meter on all sides of the foundation to keep easy access for maintenance and repair. So consider this is the generator. We have to keep minimum one meter for, on all sides for maintenance. So this is the minimum. If we can get more than one meter, this will be better for the generator. But this is the minimum. And at least two meters headroom above the set. So above the set, we must have two meters above the set also for installing the silencer, filling the coolant. So this is the minimum. Huh? We must, yani if we can get more than two meters, also this better. Now we'll talk about the generator mounting and the uh, anti-vibration. So the generator should be mounted on vibration isolation pad to prevent the set from receiving or transmitting injurious or objectionable vibration. So we have to install rubber mounting under the, under the generator set 
before putting uh, this generator set inside the room. So we have two types of the rubber or, or the anti-vibration. We will talk about these two types. Rubber isolation pads are used when small amount of vibration transmission is acceptable. And the steel springs in combination with the rubber pads are used to combat both light and heavy vibration. Here I'm going to show you the two types. So this is the normal rubber pads. This uh, rubber pads we are using for our generator set, Jubilee generator set, between coupled engine alternator and the base frame. So we use this type of anti-vibration when small amount uh, of vibration transmission is acceptable. So when the small amount of uh, vibration transmission is acceptable, so this type of vibration isolator is is uh, acceptable also but if the small amount of the vibration uh, transmission is not acceptable then we have to use this spring type in combination with the rubber type and this one we have to keep it under the base frame and this type as i told you between the coupled engine alternator and the base frame so for on our jubilee generator isolation pads are usually located between the coupled engine alternator and the base frame and then the base frame and then securely attached to the floor so this is very important guys if the if a small amount of vibration is acceptable then we can use this type between the coupled engine alternator and the base frame but if this small amount is not acceptable then we have to use or we should use this one this is spring type and combine with the normal type There is also other effects of engine vibration can minimize by providing flexible connection between engine and fuel lines. So here between the engine and the fuel lines, this is, for example, this is the engine. So then we are connecting uh, steel pipes to the fuel tank. So between the engine and the fuel lines, we must connect flexible pipes to avoid any vibration and transmission from the engine to the steel fuel lines and to avoid any damage in these lines. And for the exhaust system, we are fixing here flexible duct, uh, sorry, flexible below, also to avoid any vibration transmission from the engine to the exhaust system and to avoid any damage in the exhaust system. Uh, and for the air radiator air discharge duct, we are fixing here flexible duct connector to avoid any vibration transmission to the wall and to the building. So this flexible is very important to avoid any also vibration transmission from the engine to the building and walls. Now we will talk about the ventilation uh, for the generator room. So when we install a generator in a room with a mounted radiator and the radiator will be located inside the generator room, the basic principle is to extract the hot air from the generator room and to. So we have to extract the hot air from the engine or from the generator to outside the generator room and induce cool air or fresh air with minimum recirculation. So we have to extract hot air from the generator to outside the room, and we have to induce fresh air to the generator room with minimum recirculation. The object is to, to get cool air in at the lowest point, push it through the radiator and out of the building. And the radiator must be ducted to the opening. Uh, so between the radiator, and the, uh, the outlet opening, we must connect or we should connect uh, a piece of duct to, uh, to take the hot air from the radiator to outside the room. So if we, but some people uh, attach the radiator directly to the opening, which is not acceptable. 
and should not be considered to, to put the radiator directly on the opening because a small gap will be there between the opening and the radiator, which will cause air circulation, air, hot air circulation again inside the radiator room. And this will, we will have also air flow restriction between the radiator and the opening. So we must keep a small distance, a distance minimum one meter between the radiator and the opening and connect duct between the, uh, the radiator and the opening. So again, putting the radiator directly on the opening at the opening, this is not acceptable. We have to, to keep a minimum distance one meter between the radiator and the opening and connect duct on the one meter. Now I'm going to show you three ventilation systems and what is the, which one is the best and which one is acceptable and which one is not acceptable. This is the first system. Here in this system, as we can see, this is the air inlet opening and this is the air outlet opening. And this is the duct, and this is the flexible duct connector. In this figure, as we can see, the cooling air is coming drawn over the alternator, which takes its own cooling system, okay, from this flow. So the flow will come here first to the alternator, so the alternator will take the air flow to, uh, for cooling, and the air flow will, will pass for, uh, then to the air filters, air intake filters, and then to the engine, and then to the radiator and outside the building through the radiator fan. So the cool incoming air is drawn over the alternator, which takes its own cooling system and then through the engine and filters. And then the air is pushed through the radiator fan outside the building. Guys, this is the uh, this is the best possible ventilation system for the generator. To have the air inlet here and air outlet here. So this here you will get minimum circulation. You will get proper air flow to all components of the generator with minimum re uh, recirculation. So we recommend this uh, system for the generator ventilation. But as uh, we can see, the best is not always possible. Here the, the next one, here see where is the inlet uh, fresh air opening. The fresh air opening here in the high wall, in the high wall at the right angle side. So air flow here will bypass the alternator and the air filter. So the air flow will go directly to the engine, to the radiator fan and then outside the room. So no air flow will pass to the alternator and the air filters. And this, uh, uh, with this, uh, like with this ventilation system, this we will this will increase the uh, operating like the operating temperature and will cause overheating for the generator. So this system should not be considered. This system is wrong and should not be considered. Again, the air flow here will pass, or sorry, will bypass the alternator and the air filters, will pass directly to the engine, to the radiator fan, and then outside the generator room. So this one should, should not be considered. The third system here, which is acceptable also, when the air inlet position in the high wall, in the high wall, this, this system is acceptable if we fix a duct here to direct the air flow to the alternator. So this system is acceptable if we fix the duct here to direct the air to the alternator. So if we have the opening at the high level of the wall, then we have to fix that 
to direct the air to the alternator and air filters engine, then the air will go outside. So this system also is acceptable. Now, how to calculate the inlet and outlet openings in a simple way? In a simple way, how to calculate the sizes of these openings? The outlet opening should have a free flow area approximately 25% larger than the radiator matrix. So, the outlet opening should have a free flow area approximately 25% larger than the radiator matrix. And the same for inlet. The inlet should also have a free flow area approximately 25% larger than the radiator matrix. And again, as I told you, that we have to fix the radiator duct between the radiator and the opening to avoid any hot air circulation inside the room. I will show you now example how to calculate the opening sizes. Here, for a radiator matrix, frontal area is 1.44 square meter, so this is a radiator, and the area of this radiator is 1.44, the frontal area, 1.44 square meter, uh, the width is 1.2, and the height is 1.2. How to calculate the inlet and, opening, and inlet and outlet opening sizes? We have to add 25% to the frontal area. So 1.44 square meter plus 25% equals 1.8 square meter. So this is the free area for inlet and outlet. But remember, this is without any consideration of louver, mesh, a grill, or any sound attenuators. So this is the free area without any consideration of these louvers or uh, attenuators. So if we have uh, louvers or a grill, then you have to add this, to, uh, you have to consider this in your calculation. And for example, here, if we have a, a louver, and this louver has 80% free area, then we have to add the 80% free area to our consideration. So 1.8 divided by 0, 1.8, equals 2.25 square meter. So the free area, so the opening size for inlet and outlet will be 2.25 square meter with the consideration of the louver. So you cannot make your calculation only until here and then make the opening. You have to check what is the system that you are fixing, what, what you are going to fix. Are you going to fix uh, Louver, are you are going to fix sound attenuators? So you have to take in, the, in your consideration or in the calculation all of these uh, items. So again, if you have a radiator and the area of this radiator 1.44 square meter, we add 25% to the area to get 1.8, which is the free area without any consideration of louvers and attenuators. So the width will be 1.34 and the height will be 1.34. Then we take into consideration the louver, which has 80% free area. So 1.8 divided by 0 0.8 equals 2.25. So the width will be 1.5 and the height will be 1.5 meter. This is very, very, very simple calculation. I know maybe there is another uh, formulas for calculating the opening sizes, but this is the simple area. You can use it even if you are in the site, you can do this calculation. Now, if you have more than one generator inside in the same room, for example, here we have two generators inside the generator room. We must keep the, all the generators on the same direction. So here the radiators on the same direction to avoid any circulation from generator to other. And we have to keep the inlet openings also equal for all the generators. So 
all generator will get the proper air ventilation. So if you can see here, we, we, kept, uh, we kept one opening here for inlet for the first generator and one opening here for the second generator and one on the middle to give fresh air for both. And the radiator duct must be on the same direction. So in this, in this system, we will not get any air circulation from generator to other and we will get the proper air inlet for the both generators. This is some pictures for uh, generator installation for multi generators in the same room. Here we can see the radiator duct for the generators. And this is the exhaust system. See all the ducts on the same direction, on the same position to avoid any circulation. Now we will talk about the engine exhaust system. These are the main components of the engine exhaust system. Flexible pipe, exhaust pipe, silencer, the hangar of the silencer. And here we, we will make, I will show you later the rain cap. So again, this is the flexible pipe. This is the exhaust pipe. This is the silencer. And this is the hangar of the silencer. See, for the exhaust pipe routing, the exhaust pipe routing uh, should be as short and direct as possible. So we have to make like uh, the route of the exhaust pipe with the, yani, as, as uh, possible. We can make it short and like we have to reduce the number of bends and elbows in the exhaust pipe route. Uh, we recommend to use a schedule 40 steel pipe for the exhaust piping here. Some people using GI pipe, uh, some people using stainless steel. But for uh, our projects, we are using schedule 40 black steel iron pipes. And the exhaust system must have enough support for the pipe here and here. We must put proper support to avoid any weight coming from the exhaust system to the engine. So the exhaust system must have a proper support. Here for the silencer also, we recommend to fix a spring hanger here on the brackets to avoid any uh, uh, to avoid any vibration transmission from the silencer to the building. This is very important to fix spring hangers here, to avoid any vibration transmission from the silencer to the building. So the engine exhaust pipe must be directed to the outside through probably designed exhaust system that does not create excessive back pressure on the engine. So we must have a proper exhaust system to avoid any back pressure on the system. Later on, I will show you how to calculate the back pressure for your exhaust system. A suitable exhaust silencer should be connected in the exhaust piping. This is the silencer. We have to use the suitable silencer based on our application. We have four types of silencer, industrial, residential, critical, and supercritical. Then we have to use the suitable silencer based on our application. Now, for example, if you have, uh, uh, if, you want, if you are going to install the generator inside the hotel or hospital, then we have to use critical silencer. If the silencer, will, if the generator will be located in a residential building, then we can use the residential silencer. If the generator will be located in construction site or in a noisy place, then we can use the industrial type or in a factory, for example. The exhaust system components located within the engine room. All of these components inside the generator room, inside only should be insulated 
to reduce the heat radiation. So all the components here inside the room should be insulated. For our also uh, in our projects, we are using rock wool. We are using yeah, rock wool mat. This rock wool mat uh, density uh, 50 kilogram per cubic meter, the density. And the thickness we can use like uh, 50 or 75 or 100 and arm thickness. This recoil can operate up to 850 Celsius thermal insulation. So all the components inside the room must should be insulated with thermal insulation to avoid what to avoid any or to reduce the heat the heat uh, radiation from the exhaust system. So we can avoid also any overheating inside the generator for the generator. The outer end of the pipe here should be equipped with rain cap. Why? To avoid any rain or water or snow from entering the exhaust system. So here at the end, we are fixing rain cap, or you can also make a cut of 60 to the horizontal. Here you can make a cut to avoid any snow or rain from, uh, from entering the exhaust system. If the building equipped with the smoke reduction system, the exhaust outlet should be postponed so it cannot uh, set off the smoke reduction alarm. So if we locate the generator inside the building and the room inside the building, then we have to extend the exhaust pipe to outside the building. Especially if we have uh, smoke reduction, because this uh, when the generator will run, the smoke detection system will operate automatically. So we have to extend this exhaust pipe to outside the building. Here for the silencer location, we have two options to install the silencer location, either to install the silencer inside the room, or we can install it outside the room or on the rooftop of the building. So we have two options. The first option is inside the room or outside the room, or we can locate it on the rooftop. There, uh, there are advantages for both options. Like when you install the generator and in the silencer sorry, inside the room, the sound attenuation, uh, sorry, the sound, uh, well, here, uh, yeah, when we install the silencer inside the room close to the engine, we can get bitter sound. Why? Because here we have short pipe between the engine and the silencer. But see here, there is a long pipe between the silencer and the engine, so you will get more sound in this option. But in this option, you will get bitter sound. So if you are looking for bitter sound, then you have to install the silencer inside the room. Also the servicing, if you are going to service the silencer, it's better to fix it inside the room. So you will get easy access for the silencer, but here also very difficult to service the silencer in the other option. The advantage of fixing the silencer outside the room, when we fix the silencer outside the room, no need to put any insulation on the silencer. So we will save cost of uh, insulating the silencer. So when we fix the silencer outside the room, no need to fix any insulation on the silencer. The exhaust system should avoid touching or passing it close to the oil and fuel filters, fuel tank, low pressure and high pressure fuel systems, radiator, air cleaner, oil sump, and engine wiring and sensors. So we should take, uh, take, uh, should take care about this. So this, this uh, exhaust system should not avoid any touching or passing this, uh, the exhaust system to these items. Now we'll talk about the back pressure.
The exhaust system will produce a certain resistance to the flow of exhaust gases. So if we have exhaust system installed along with the generator, and you know th there is a flow coming from the engine to this exhaust system, we will, this exhaust system, our own exhaust system will produce a certain resistance to this flow. We call this back pressure. And this back pressure must be within the limit of the engine maximum. So for every engine, there is maximum back pressure allowed. If we open the data sheet, provided uh, by Perkins, we can see the maximum back pressure allowed for each engine. So this, uh, our, ex our exosystem back pressure should not be exceed this number. Now talk about the exhaust system, back pressure. What are the effects of exhaust back pressure? First, so we will get loose in power. If we have more back pressure, more than the allow, we will get loose in power. Approximately 0.5% decrease of the generator power for each 3.3 kilopascal above the limit. So 0.5 percent decrease on the loss on the power for each 3.5 kilopascal above the maximum level. For the fuel consumption also will increase. If you have back pressure over the limit, the fuel consumption will increase for the generator. Again, 0.5 percent the same for the fuel consumption, 0.5 percent for each 3.3 kilopascal above the maximum level. For the temperature also the same, 2.5% increase in the gas temperature, exhaust gas temperature for each 3.3 kilopascal above the level. So with the higher exhaust back pressure, more, the, more than the limit, we will get decrease in the power of the generator, the fuel consumption will increase and the exhaust gas temperature will increase, 0.5% decrease in the power and 0.5 percent increase in the fuel consumption and 0.5 percent increase in the exhaust gas temperature for each 3.3 3.5 kilopascal above the limit and i told you the limit we can take it from the technical data sheet that provided by perkins the major design factors that may cause high pressure high back pressure are exhaust pipe diameter too small or exhaust pipe too long or maybe too many shards bent in the exhaust system or the exhaust silencer is too high. So if we have one of these factors, maybe we'll get high back pressure. How to, redu how to reduce the back pressure? We have to increase the pipe diameter. So if you use, for example, four inch pipe and we get uh, high back pressure on the generator, then we have to increase the pipe diameter to reduce this back pressure. How to calculate the back pressure for the exhaust system? This is the formula that we are using to calculate the back pressure, you will get the back pressure in kilopascal. So the formula says P equal L times S times Q power uh, Q square times 3.6 times 10 power 8. Sorry, 10 power 6. Okay, again, the back pressure in kilopascal equal L times S times Q squared times 3.6 times 10 power, 10 power 6 divided by D power 5 plus PS. P is the back pressure in kilopascal. Q is the uh, gas flow for the engine. And this, this data we can take it, from, we can get it, sorry, from the engine data sheet. 
the gas flow in cubic meter per minute. Per minute. L is the total equivalent length of the pipe, including uh, the flexible below and all the elbows. So this is not only the pipe length, this is the total equivalent length of the pipe, including the pipe, the silencer, and the flexible below. D is the pipe diameter in millimeters, and PS, this is the pressure drop of the silencer, or the back pressure of the silencer. This one we can get it from the silencer data sheet, not from the engine, it's from the silencer data sheet. S is the density of the gas. Guys, this is very important. L, total equivalent length of the bulb. I, I want to repeat this point because this point is very important. Because some people think the total equivalent pipe length, they will calculate only the pipe length without considering without any consideration for the elbow and the flexible below. This must be the total equivalent length of pipe must be for the total length, including the flexible below and the elbows. How to calculate the equivalent length of straight pipe? We have four types of elbows, the standard elbow, long elbow, 45 elbow, and square elbow. The first one that we are using normally, the standard 90 degree elbow. So that the equivalent length of the straight pipe for 90 degree elbow equal 33D divided by X. D is the diameter of pipe, X is the 1000 millimeter or 12 inch. So if your uh, pipe diameter pipe diameter in uh, millimeter, then you have to divide it by 1000. And if your pipe diameter in inch, then you have to divide it by 12. So the length equal 33D divided by X. D is the pipe diameter and X is 1000 millimeter or 12 inch. For, length, uh, for long elbow, we can use this formula. 20D divided by X, the same D is the pipe diameter and X is 1000 or 12. For 45 elbow, the equivalent length is equal 15D divided by X. And for square elbow, 66D divided by X. As I told you before, we are using this one normally. This is the standard elbow 90 degree. Now I'll give you an example also. I know this formula is uh, complex. Calculate the exhaust back pressure for GB1250. So we consider that we have 1250 kV generator and we want to calculate the back pressure for the exhaust system. And this exhaust system, the pipe diameter is 355.6, which is equal uh, 14 inch. The pipe length is three meters. Number of 90 degree elbow is three numbers. We have three numbers, 90 degree elbows. The flexible pillow length is 250 mm. And we don't have any 45 elbow. Exhaust gas flow, 235 cubic meter per minute. This is from the engine data sheet. The exhaust gas temperature is 422 Celsius. This is also from the engine data sheet. The silencer back pressure is 400, uh, sorry, is 4 kilopascal. This is from the silencer data sheet. So now we want to calculate the back pressure for this exhaust system. So for this uh, exhaust system, how to, now first thing we want to calculate the equivalent straight pipe of this pipe. First, we will do it for the 90 degree elbow, uh, which is equal 33. Is in our formula 33 multiplied by 355.6 divided by 1000, which is equal 11.7348. This is for one elbow only 33d divided by 1000. This is the pipe diameter and 1000 for the millimeters. So 33 times 355.6 divided by 1000 which is equal 11.73 meters. This is for one elbow. So for three elbow, the equivalent straight pipe is 
11.7348 times 3 equals uh, 35.2 meters. So the equivalent straight pipe for the three numbers of elbow is 35.2 meters. For the flexible below, the formula to how to calculate the equivalent uh, straight pipe for flexible below is to multiply the flexible below length by two. So here we have the flexible below 250 divided by 1000 to calculate in uh, millimeters, then multiply by two, so 0 0.5. So we have the uh, 0 0.25 meter flexible below. The equivalent for this flexible pipe is 0 0.5 meters, just double the length. So the total equivalent straight pipe is three meters. This is the pipe length. The 35.2 plus the 35.2, which is the equivalent for, uh, for the three elbows, plus 0 0.5 is the equivalent length for the flexible below. So the total equivalent straight pipe is 38.7 meters. See, in our, in our uh, real condition, the pipe, the, the pipe length is only three meters. But in our calculation, the equivalent straight pipe now is 38.7. That's why I told you before the, the, uh, the very important point is to calculate the equivalent straight by. And you have to take into consideration the number of elbows, uh, the type of elbow, the flexible pillow, uh, and anything that you put in your uh, calculation. So don't consider only the by length. So then we have to use this formula. to calculate the back pressure using this uh, equivalent length. And we have to add the 4 kilopascal for the silencer. So, so from this formula, we can get 0 0.69 kilopascal plus 4. So the back pressure for this exhaust system will be 4.69 kilopascal. If you look to the data sheet for this engine, the exhaust back pressure limit for this engine is 5 kilopascal, and we get uh, from our exhaust system 4.69. So the 4.69 is below the maximum uh, limit. So uh, since the exhaust back pressure limit for this engine is 5 kilopascal and the total of piping of 3 meters with 3 number of elbows with the flexible below is 4.69. So with the residential grade silencer, so this engine shall work without any change in the performance. And the exhaust back pressure is acceptable. This is the technical data sheet for engines. You can get this one from Berkel's website. Just put your engine model and you can get the data sheet. This data sheet include, include all the technical data back pressure, fuel consumption, uh, airflow, and all the required data. That's it for today. Presentation. We have done the presentation, and now we can start addressing the questions that uh, were posted during the presentation. Lisa, can you please share with us the question? Uh, this question from Naaman Masoud. Is there any standard for space or approximately space? Yeah, I told you in, uh, during the presentation, minimum we have to keep one meter around the generator, minimum around the generator on all sides. So from the front one meter, from the back one meter, right and left side one meter. And at the top of the generator, minimum we have to keep two meters. This is the minimum. If we can get more, this will be better for the generator. Next question. What is the range 
of small amount of vibration. See, uh, there is no any accurate number for the small number of amount of vibration. This, you know, for projects, we are receiving the specification from the based on the consultant requirement. So they will give the, for example, a number of vibration and this, if this is acceptable. So if this small amount is acceptable, no need for a spring type isolated. But if this small amount uh, is, accept, is acceptable, then rubber bath is, uh, will work suitable with the generator. No need to fix the spring type. But for this, I will get the, this small, uh, this vibration amount and uh, I'll send you the data, data sheet of the vibration. Say it has a okay. Next question. How to calculate the grand free area to 80%? This uh, the free area of the rover. Uh, you can take it from the louver supplier. I mean, you can ask your supplier, I need 80% louver, I need 70% free area louver, 60% free area. Based on your requirement, he can give you. I mean, but uh, here in Dubai, normally we are using 80% free louver air for the generator rooms. That's why I take into consideration the 80% only. Next question. Next question. For more generators in one room, what will be the distance between the integral distance between generators? Uh, that's it. You can consider a minimum like one meter between the generators. One meter for the first one, one meter for the two. So between the generators, two meter. And from all the sides, one meter. So again, between the two generators, keep two meters. And the right side of the first generator, second generator, keep one meter. So one plus one will be two between the two generators. I think we have done this. How do, how do you calculate the back pressure in the exhaust system? Can you, okay, we have done this. We sh I show you how the formula and I give you example how to calculate the back pressure. Yeah, the straight pipe length, this is the Minimum length, the three meters. In our example, the three meters is the pipe length. This is the minimum length of the exhaust pipe. After that, we calculated the elbows and the flexible below. Next question. What is the recommended distance between radiator and louver, especially if we if we have sound attenuator, okay. See, um, first of all, for the radiator, in front of radiator, we have, I told you, minimum we have to fix. First, we have to fix the flexible duct connector. Then we have to fix the duct, the duct minimum one meter, minimum. And then you have to install the sound attenuator. So first the flexible duct connector, then the duct, the sound attenuators, then the louver. And the duct must be minimum one meter. What about the direction of the wind? I don't understand what, what's, what you mean. I mean. If you I mean the direction of the wind outside the gentle room, there is no any consideration for this since the uh, radiator fan is sucking the air from the air inlet. So no need to any force to push the air inside the room. How would is the sound attenuation designed for them? This is the this is separate subject. If there is another next presentation, we can discuss the sound attenuation and the design of the sound attenuators. The sound the design of the sound attenuators. This based on our requirement. How many dBA we need to achieve? So if you want to achieve like 90 dBA at one meter or 80 dBA at three meters. What is your requirements? Based on your requirements, we can make the design of the sound attenuators. And also in the sound attenuators, you have also to take the consideration of the airflow and the back pressure, since there will be back pressure on the sound attenuators. Next question. Finish. 
what do you mean by parallel connection? Uh, you mean by uh, electrical synchronization or I don't understand this question actually. Yes, please, the question must be related to the uh, to our topic only. How, see, for the vibration, I told you, any connection between the engine to the building, we have to, put, we have to put flexible or spring. If you hand the silencer to the ceiling, you have to put anti-vibration between the silencer and the ceiling. If you connect your fuel system, to the main tank using steel pipes, then you have to fix first flexible pipes, flexible hoses between the engine and the fuel system. For the duct, the same. Between the radiator and the duct, you have to put flexible duct to avoid the uh, vibration transmission. And the same under the generator. You have to put the rubber band between the engine, coupled engine alternator and the base frame. And Optional also you can put the spring tile to reduce the vibration. Even the concrete under the generator, the concrete part, the foundation, also reducing the vibration transmission to the building. So there, there are many uh, ways to reduce the vibration. When uh, this, uh, when considering the engine space before installation for large, large generator sets for industrial application, can cooling system introduce in the equipment space? When considering the engine space before installing a large generator, can cooling system be introduced in the equipment space? Can you uh, explain this question more, please? Regarding the wind the direction, I told you there is no any uh, there is no any consideration for the wind direction outside the room. Since I told you, just make the opening. Yani some people uh, installing the generator in the basement, and there is no wind inside the basement. The main factor is to keep the correct uh, opening size so the airflow can go through this. Uh, and as I told you, the radiator fan is sucking the, uh, the air, the fresh air through the opening. For the space between the two generators, I told you before, between the generators exactly, you have to keep one meter plus one meter. So two meters between the two generators. And around the generators, you, can, you have to keep also minimum one meter. This is the minimum. If you can keep more, I told you this is better. I think we have done the questions. Okay, so I would like to thank you all for joining or attend and attending our webinar today. Uh, we would like, we would uh, appreciate if you can fill our uh, webinar survey, and you will be receiving the A certificate automatically after uh, completing this survey. Thank you so much for attending our webinar. Thank you.